Medium format cameras. These scary but stylish looking beasts are what photographers use to create large scale images with more detail than any standard digital or 35 millimeter camera. They can take images with softer, shallower depth of field while still maintaining all the beautiful colors, tones, and grains that you can only get on film. In today's video, I'll be talking to you about medium format cameras. And before you run away, no, this isn't just for the nerds. Even if you're not a photographer, I hope you'll enjoy learning something new. And if you are a photographer, this might make you think about your next upgrade. I'll be talking you through some of my favorite cameras that I've picked up over the years while weighing up their pros and cons. So firstly, what is medium format? Photographic film can be cut into different sizes to fit into different cameras. Here we have the familiar 35 millimeter. Then we move up into the medium format category. Here we have 120 film. Above that is large format. Here we have a five by four negative, And here is an eight by 10 inch negative but that's a whole other video. So the larger the film, the larger the photo. The trade-off is that if you buy a larger film size, you're gonna be shooting less shots per roll. And then in large format, you only shoot individual sheets one by one. To help see the difference between 35 millimeter and medium format, we can load them into a film scanner. For this comparison, both images were taken on Kodak Portrait 400. This is so we get the most accurate colors and tones between both of the images. Of course, the quality of the lens you use will impact how sharp an image is, but with negatives this large, most standard medium format lenses can blow any 35mm out of the water. The first medium format camera I bought was the Mir RB67. The RB stands for rotating back. This means that you can switch it between portrait and landscape. This avoids you having to get into an awkward position shooting like this, like you have to do with some medium format cameras. And the 6.7 in its name is because it has a 6x7 aspect ratio. This is pretty close to 5x4 or 8x10. This is also the largest aspect ratio you can get on a medium format camera. This one's 6.7, some are 6.45, some are 6x6 square. But by having the largest possible negative, that means you're going to get the most detail and highest resolution out of every photo you take. It's all mechanical, with no electronic components, no batteries. This means it's always ready to shoot. And if it ever does need repairs, it's a lot easier to fix a camera that doesn't have electronic parts. That's if you ever do need to repair this thing. It's made of all metal, so it can take its share of bumps and bruises. The downsides to this camera, as each negative is so large, you're only gonna get 10 photos per roll. It's also super heavy, so I definitely recommend getting a tripod if you wanna shoot with this. The RB67 served me well for many years as my first medium format camera. Eventually though, I wanted to upgrade, so I saved up some money and I started weighing up my options. This brought me to try out the Hasselblad 500C. Hasselblads carry such a rich history. Originally designed by Mr. Victor Hasselblad to aid the Swedish Air Force, their portable design and razor-sharp optics made them pioneers in the photographic industry. They were taken into space in 1962 to capture the first colour photos of Earth, and then again in 1969 for the first moon landing. For many photographers, this is the perfect camera. Design-wise, it has the best possible lenses inside the smallest camera bodies. It shoots square images, so you get 12 photos instead of 10 photos per roll, like on the RB. And its small size means you don't really need to move your hands about too much when you're operating it. Everything's just in the right place. Well, apart from the aperture changing system, I'm not too much of a fan of it, but each to their own. So why wouldn't you want to shoot with the Hasselblad? The price. Yes, it has a lot of undeniable features like its Carl Zeiss lenses and stylish form factor. In my opinion though, so much of the price tag is just paying for the legacy instead of what's actually in your hands. It's more fragile than a tank like the Mamiya RB67, so if you did have to get it repaired, it would be very expensive. After chatting to my fellow photographer friends about what they like and dislike about their medium format cameras, I saved up some more money, I bit the bullet on a really good eBay deal, and I found what I was looking for. Looks familiar? Well, that's good it is. It's the younger sibling of the Mimir RB67, the Mimir RZ67. For my style of work, the 6x7 frame suits me the best. This frame feels more natural for portraits in my opinion compared to the square format. I also wanted something lighter and quicker than my last camera. The RZ67 is made of a mix of plastic and metal. This more lightweight design opens up the possibility of going on longer shoots if you need to shoot handheld and not have to rely on a tripod all the time. A few features on the RZ67 make shooting a lot more seamless. On the RB, you push down two separate levers after you've taken every photo. The first lever winds your film onto the next frame, and the second lever pulls down the mirror so you can see through the lens. On the RZ though, they've combined both of them into one lever, making it a lot easier and a lot quicker to shoot. Let's take a look inside the viewfinder. Thanks to the electronic components inside the camera, it has a built-in light meter to tell you what camera settings you need to put in. 
I find it isn't as reliable as my handheld light meter, but the results aren't too inaccurate that it can't be used as a backup. You can also see some lights along the bottom. These let you know if there are any errors before you shoot. The little red light means that you've forgotten to take your dark slide out. And the little orange light means that either there's no film in the camera or the film hasn't been wound all the way, so just push down the lever a few more times. Speaking of the viewfinder, this eye level prism is a must have accessory if you're gonna pick up one of these. Normally, when you look through a medium format camera, everything is inverted. If you tell your model to move to the left, it will look like they're moving to the right in the camera. After a while of shooting, you get used to this flipped round world, but with an eye level prism, it switches everything back to normal. And with this, you look through it like this instead of peering down, like with other cameras. This makes it a lot easier to shoot tall people because you don't have to peer down and get up high. The lenses on the RZ are sharper, but alternatively, you can take your old RB lenses and put them on the RZ. Unfortunately, this doesn't work the other way around, so you can't put an RZ lens on an RB camera. The one big killer with this camera is its electronic components. Spare electric parts of this camera have been out of production for years now, so if you take it to a repair shop, they might just turn you down at the door. So keep it away from water and don't drop it. Now onto a quick few honorable mentions. Here are some cameras that friends of mine have let me borrow and play about with, Bronica cameras. Much cheaper than other medium format cameras and more lightweight, they're not as fancy looking as the competition and other cameras will produce sharper images, but they are a good option if you're looking for an entry level medium format camera. The Pentax 6.7. Here you get the same form factor as a 35mm, but with the power of medium format film. As it's so easy to hold, you don't need to use a tripod. And you also don't need to peer down a waist level viewfinder. You can just put it up to your eye, like normal. Just be sure to shoot this on a fast shutter speed, as its mirror has been known to give the cameras a lot of shake when taking photos on slower speeds. Holger cameras. These little things are definitely the most cost effective option. The price of Holger cameras is so low that sometimes they cost less than getting a roll of film bought, developed and processed. So for some, this is the easy pick. The lens and build quality do reflect this price though. Don't expect anything sharp to come out of this camera. You could probably get away with okay results if you were just planning to take photos for your Instagram, but if you try to print it any larger than your phone screen, it might look scary. Lastly, we have digital medium format. Not much to say about this. I used one of these with a bunch of friends back in university and it felt like a has science gone too far moment. At least I have a headshot where I can see the blood floating around the veins in my eyes on a camera that costs more than my entire bachelor's degree. So that wraps it up for all things medium format. I hope you've enjoyed this video and maybe learned something new. If you have any questions about cameras, feel free to drop me a message on Instagram and I'll be happy to help you out.